بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والمطلقات يتربصن بأنفسهن ثلاثة قروء ولا يحل له ما خلق الله في أرحامهن ما خلق الله في أرحامهن إن كن يؤمن بالله واليوم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة لأهل التقوى واليقين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما أحل الله شيئا أبغض إليه من الطلاق Dear viewers, dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to explain the rules of divorce in this session and also in the few more sessions to come. Divorce is a reality that we have to accept and we have to embrace. It is one of the phenomena that is, of course, affecting the society, the Islamic society. And it is a problem also that has to be dealt and properly studied. The cause of divorce, the reason why families disintegrate why couples separate from each other. All this is a reality that has to be understood and studied and examined by, by the people concerned. There are families who, who are actually suffering from a lack of understanding between the couples. And this lack of understanding leads to crisis in the family and ultimately it breaks the whole family. Most of the problems within a family emanate, stem from, from a lack of understanding and a lack of reconciliation and a lack of self sacrifice and devotion. It is either because of arrogance or a lack of uh, understanding that a woman wants to separate from her husband and the husband wants to divorce his wife. Now this is one of the serious issues, one of the problems, one of the frequently asked questions that are directed to the offices of the religious authorities. Many couples want to seek a solution to this problem. They want to know what they should do in order to 
save their marriage in order to cure this problem. Of course, the religious authorities do suggest some solutions and some methods for the couples to, uh, to save their marriage. They advise all the couples to compromise, to reconcile with each other, to try to understand each other, to try to help each other and cooperate with each other and to try to decrease their expectations from each other. They should be faithful towards each other. It is forbidden for a husband as well as for a woman to cheat behind the partner. It is haram for the, for the husband to cheat behind his wife's back and also for the wife to cheat behind her husband's back, of course. And they should be truthful to each other. They should be faithful. Otherwise, divorce is a reality that has to be sought as the final solution. Divorce is the ultimate solution. It is the last resort. And it is allowable. It is permissible. There are some obligations, some duties that both sides have to accept and have to fulfill so that both sides should have a happy and prosperous life. And of course, they, each side has to understand has his or her obligations and duties in order for him or her to be able to fulfill it, to be able to carry out his or her obligation. Without a proper understanding of one's social status, of one's social position in the family as well as the society, I think many people will try, will try to misuse his position or will deviate from the right path. We are trying to help you understand the rules, the Islamic laws, the Islamic, the jurisprudential rules regarding various topics. And of course, one of the topics which is important to be understood is the subject of divorce. Divorce is permissible by itself. Divorce is allowable by itself. But it is a despicable reality. As I said that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has been narrated, has been quoted as having said, that Allah has not made permissible anything more abominable than divorce. مَا أَحَلَّ اللَّهُ شَيْئًا أَبْغَذُ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ الطَّلَاقِ Allah has not made permissible anything more abominable than divorce. So this hadith, this saying of the Holy Prophet means that Divorce is permissible per se. It is allowable by itself, but it is detested. It is abhorred. It is abhorrible. It is a despicable reality. And it is permissible, but it is disliked. Something which is abominable to God. God does not like it, even though he has proposed it, he has given it as a solution to the families and to the couples. Dear brothers and sisters, it has to be noted, divorce is the right 
of the husband. It is an exclusive right of the husband. The wife does not have this right according to Sharia law. She does not have the right and the authority and the permission to divorce her husband. We are not speaking of civil law or statutory law. We speak of Sharia law. And Sharia law has given this right, this, the right of divorce, to the husband only. No one else other than the husband can divorce the wife. Of course, when it comes to a court, there are different courts, Islamic courts, a non-Islamic and Islamic course, the divorce which is conducted and carried out by the courts are not valid according to Sharia law because there is no, there is no, there is no of course, witness and of course there is no verification or examination as to whether the wife is in her menses or not or, uh, or whether or not the wife is uh, purified of her menses or not. There is no such thing in the court. So it is just a legal separation. But the, the husband and the wife might still remain married to each other. And they, they are and they remain as couples to each other. As partners to each other, as, as husband and wife to each other. So the court divorce is not valid according to Islamic law. It is only a legal divorce, but not a sharia, a shari divorce. There is a difference between legal divorce, which is con conducted and which is carried out by the court, and the one which is carried out by the husband, by the husband in the presence of two witnesses. And of course, in certain circumstances, the husband can stipulate in the marriage contract that she will have the right to divorce herself on her husband's behalf. For example, it can be written and recorded in the, in the nikah letter or in the contract letter that in case the husband will be absent for, let's say, one year or two years or ten years, or if the husband gets addicted to drugs, if, if he becomes a drug addict, or if he is arrested by the by government as a culprit, as a criminal, and he stays in the court, in, the, in prison, and he is imprisoned by the government, and so in so conditions are, are placed in the marriage contract, then these conditions are valid and the wife will have the permission to divorce herself on behalf of the husband. In this case, the wife is an agent of the husband. The wife is a representative, a wakil of the husband and she can divorce herself from divorce herself on behalf of the husband of course she must be clever enough the husband the wife should be clever on, enough on the day when she recites the nikah and when everything is appointed designated and fixed she must stipulate she must she must put these conditions within the nikah within these letter or the contract 
so that in future if a problem arises, if her husband becomes an addict, or if he is arrested on some charges, or if he is absent and goes, out, goes missing for, for a few years, then she will have the right to divorce herself, to become free, and to, in order to be able to marry another man. So if the woman herself knows nothing about this, at least the parents should intervene and should inform their daughter about these things. This is something that the, the daughter or the parents can do and then can teach their daughters to fix this and to put these as conditions in the contract, in the marriage contract. And it is in the best interest of the woman to put these conditions or to place these conditions in the contract so that if a difficulty arises in future, she might be able to divorce herself in the absence of her husband or when her husband becomes a drug addict. There are some times when the husband does not want to divorce, does not want to divorce his wife. He has become an addict or he is behaving very badly with his wife or he does not provide maintenance uh, for the family, he does not give his wife food and drink, he does not support her, he does not give he, uh, her money uh, in order for her to be able to purchase something for herself or for the children. So he keeps the wife hungry and yet the wife is persisting on divorce. She is demanding divorce from her husband and, and, and he is not willing to divorce. Sometimes he might be willing to, he might uh, have an intention of revenge. He might want to revenge, to take a revenge from his wife or from uh, her in-laws. And therefore he tries to avoid giving divorce. He is now a, a drug addict and he is not providing his wife with anything that she needs food, clothing, and medical uh, treatment. None of this he's ready and he is willing to give. And he is not supporting his wife. In this case, of course, the wife is in a severe difficulty. The wife is in an unbearable situation. What can she do? Can she uh, leave her husband's house and go to her parents' house without he, her husband's permission or can he separate from her husband through some other means? Of course, as we mentioned, court marriage is not valid. And in many countries, like, like suppose in the neighboring countries, like, like of course, uh, Pakistan and, 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 and secular states, of course, we see that the divorce is not uh, conducted according to Sharia ah law. Therefore, the divorce is not considered as valid divorce. So, uh, this is a, a problem. What should she do? The husband is not meant behaving well. He is not supporting his wife. And the, husband, the wife is, is in extreme difficulty. The wife is suffering from hunger and, and intolerable problem in the family. To whom should she turn? Of course, she should turn to the religious authority. He, she should go or refer to a qualified mujtahid, a mujtahid who is the most learning, learned, a mujtahid who is eligible for taqlid. He is a qualified mujtahid. Now, who is she following? She should turn to, to him for divorce. The marja, the qualified jurisprudent, the qualified mujtahid, will advise her husband to either behave himself, to maintain proper conduct towards his wife, or else he should divorce. If he does not behave himself, if he does not support his family, if he does not provide his wife with food and clothing and medical treatment, 
And if he is not ready to do any of this, then he will be forced to divorce his wife. He will be compelled to divorce his wife. And if he does not do either of these, then the divorce will be conducted and carried out by the marja. The mujtahid will divorce the woman and will help her separate from her husband. Of course, in this case, in this exceptional case, the divorce which is carried out by the mujtahid will be valid. Because the mujtahid is a guardian of the Muslim, he, he, he has some sort of wilaya, guardianship over Muslims. And this is where he exercises his guardianship. This is where he exercises his wilaya. He divorces the wife and helps her get separated from her cruel husband. نجيتك يا رحمن ودعوتك يا ديان يا خالق الإنسان الله 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 يا خالق الإنسان الله الله الله. This is of course the only and the exceptional case where the marja, the mujtahid, has the right to divorce a woman. Of course, there are reports, accounts of some people giving divorce to a, to a, to a man's wife. There are emails which I have read, and these e emails indicate that a certain so-called alim, has divorced the wife of a certain man without his permission and without his knowledge. Of course, that, marriage, that divorce is not valid. There is no doubt that the divorce is not valid. All this procedure has to be covered, has to be completed. No one other than the marja other than the mujtahid, the qualified mujtahid, has the right to divorce someone's wife. No alim other than a mujtahid has the right to divorce. Of course, he can work as an agent, as someone who will, in, who will mediate, who will mediate between the marja, the mujtahid, and the husband and the couples. The marja will, through the agent, through the, that wakil, for example, some grand religious authorities have their own representatives and their own deputies, their own agents in certain countries like India, Pakistan, and the neighboring countries, and Europe, and America. The all, of course, most of the religious authorities have their representatives in those countries. So those rep representatives will mediate between the mujtahid and the couples, and the couple. Of course, the couple do not have access to the marja. They do not, if, even if they have the marja's phone number or co contact uh, information or contact details, they do not understand Arabic, they do not understand Persian. So what should they do? They have to either, of course, contact the marja through his representative, or they have to find a translator, then, then of course the in interpreter, the interpreter will speak to the marja and the marja will tell them, advise them to do so and so. And of course, if there is no other way, then the marja will through that interpreter inform her that, okay, I have divorced the woman and the woman is separated from her husband. And sometimes this is done by the, by the marja's wakil and representative in that country. He will negotiate between them. He will mediate between them, between the couple and the marja. Whenever the negotiation is over, then of course the, then the action will be taken. Either the marja will divorce her or maybe another solution may be proposed. The representative of the marja cannot arbitrarily divorce the, woman's, the woman 
and cannot, of course, without consulting, without seeking permission or without being authorized by the Marja, cannot divorce that woman. And this has to be noted. This has to be clarified and understood. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the important conditions of the divorce is that there should be two witnesses at the time of divorce. Now there are a number of conditions which I will mention. And here I will have to say that there is a difference between Shia and Sunni in terms of the divorce. When it comes to the rules of divorce, the Shia and Sunni religions and sects are different about, about the issue of divorce. According to the Sunni uh, sect and according to the Sunni school of jurisprudence, a divorce can be carried out without there being any witnesses. When a, when a man says, I have divorced you, even sometimes if he says jokingly or angrily or unintentionally, the divorce according to Ahl Sunnah will take place. And if he says, for example, Anti Talik Thalathan, I have divorced you three times. Or if he says, Anti Talik three times, the same thing, Anti Talik, Anti Talik three times then the woman is permanently divorced, according to a Sunni uh, school of jurisprudence. This is what they say. And when it comes to the Shia jurisprudence and the Shia rules, of course, Shia is very much strict. Because the Shia school, the school of Ahl al-Bayt, is aims at reunion, aims at bringing the couple together. And of course, there are strict conditions. There are strict measures regarding divorce and the absence of which, of course, the divorce will not take place. Inshallah, in the next session to come, I will enumerate, I will explain the rules, conditions, and of course, the, those strict measures which have been introduced by the infallibles. Those I will mention in the next session, inshallah. So try to keep up and follow the discussion regarding divorce. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. اللهم بارك للحجاج والزوار في الزاد والنفقة واقض ما أوجبت عليهم من الحج والعمرة بفضلك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين